to add one more layer of complexity <laughs> to our appetite sensing, um, I have to talk about gut microbes. I have to talk about the microbiota. So microbiota, that's the organisms that are found kind of all around our body, but often localized to the gut, mainly bacteria, but there's other organisms in there as well. Whereas the microbiome, that's all that extra genetic material we get because of all those extra uh, organisms we have uh, in and around our body, in and on our body, okay? Now we know, and this is becoming clearer and clearer, that um, a gut microbes or microbiota has uh, implications for obesity. And one of the mechanisms by which the, the microbiota can affect um, can increase the risk of obesity is through appetite pathways, okay? There's others as well. Energy harvesting is a big one as well. We're going to talk about that later, but um, I wanted to talk about the gut microbes and their effect on appetite. And really, I, I think this picture kind of summarizes it because there's so much complexity of what can be going on in an individual's uh, microbiota. So it's really hard to know what kind of exact shifts um, cause what. The One of the leading kind of overall hypotheses is that when we eat a certain way, either in a healthier way or a less healthier way, we start to build bacterial populations in our gut mainly that are that like those types of foods. Okay. So if you're constantly eating whole foods, you're going to have a microbiota population that is more that loves whole foods. And if you have that population that loves whole foods, it's going to ask you. <laughs> so you have that so you eat whole foods that promotes the 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 particular type of microbiota population and that particular population wants to stay there, so it's going to ask for those same foods. The converse is also true. If we're eating a lot of processed foods, that promotes a shift in the microbiota uh, that we have in our gut, and those want to stay there, so they're going to keep asking for those same types of foods. Okay, so that's more conceptually what we believe is going on. So as far as how the microbiota affects uh, appetite, you may recall from uh, 110 that certain um, types of fiber that we consume in our diet, certain types of carbohydrates that we consume in our diet that are not digested by the, the small intestine move into the large intestine where bacteria act on them, um, producing these short chain fatty acids like butyrate, acetate, and propionate. And those will then enter the circulation and can then uh, well, they contribute to energy intake, but they have can have effects on uh, other parts as well, which we'll get back to, okay? Uh, we believe that those short-chain fatty acids, part of the way they affect appetite is that they uh, modulate the secretion of some other gut peptides, like peptide YY, which we didn't really talk about, and GLP-1, which are both uh, uh, satiety-promoting uh, peptides. Okay. So as components of the exometabolome, as it's sometimes called, short-chain fatty acids that are produced due to bacteria and, and certain carbohydrates that we consume, therefore act as key molecules governing the sensing signaling pathway linking luminal metabolism to appetite regulation. Okay. So putting it a different way, here we have our um, gut microbes that are producing certain short chain fatty acids and due to their effects, not specifically on um, by getting into the blood, but due to their effects on other enteroendocrine cells, so certain secretory cells of the uh, intestine that actually affects the, the, the release of um, certain of those satiety factors from those um, secretory cells within the, the intestine. Perhaps those uh, metabolites also interact with the vagus nerve and affect appetite that, that way, but quite honestly, like I keep saying, a lot of this is still uh, not clear, but this is one of the proposed mechanisms by which our microbiota can affect uh, appetite, okay? 
So putting this all together, this whole unit together, some basic messages that, that we should leave with are, you know, about leptin. We know about leptin. Leptin is secreted by white adipose tissue in response to its expansion. That leptin can inhibit the NPY AGRP neurons and activate the, the satiety-inducing POMC CART neurons, leading to an overall satiety effect. Ghrelin does the opposite. Okay, well, ghrelin in particular works on that uh, NPY AGRP um, pathway, stimulating it, promoting that uh, orexigenic or appetite increasing effect. Okay, GLP 1 and CCK, these are both secreted by uh, intestinal cells uh, in response to food entering the, the small intestine in particular. And basically, they have both that um, endocrine pathway as well as that vagal pathway uh, towards the hypothalamus again to affect um, eating behavior. Okay, And as far as the microbiome, the best uh, established role we know that it plays via appetite is via its metabolites. It's via these short chain in um, fatty acids interacting with intestinal cells and affecting those intestinal cells' abilities to secrete um, certain of those satiety factors like GLPY and peptide YY. As we mentioned before, so far all of this has been focused on homeostatic appetite, everything working well, us just sensing and responding to long-term signals like the expansion of adipose tissue or short-term signals like what's going on in our digestive, digestive tract and what's going on in our uh, microbiome as well. Okay, that's all homeostatic appetite, but in the next part of the appetite series, we're going to start looking specifically at the concept of reward in particular and uh, linking that to this concept of hedonic appetite, this type of appetite that makes us want to eat even when we're not hungry, okay? Or perhaps increases our desire to eat when we are hungry and makes us eat even more. Okay, and quite honestly, when it comes to these two, this is often in, in individuals with obesity, it's the hedonic appetite that's driving the ship, often because homeostatic signals have been compromised. And even if they haven't been, which they usually are, this hedonic appetite can, <laughs> as we know, <laughs> can override a lot of things too. Okay, so we'll talk more about that in the next unit.